questions 44 and 45. So it's talking about auxin and growth in plants um, and, uh, and that auxin regulates by promoting cell enlargement and division. So we have a nice, uh, beautiful uh, graph again. So uh, just going through what we'll do. So we uh, first we look at the labels. There is no label, but so we'll label it ourselves. And this has to do with uh, plant growth uh, when auxin is applied. So I think um, that would be our label that we would give it. And then two, the second thing we look at is the x-axis and warning signs go off because we can see that the x-axis is not going up uh, by regular number of units like 5, 10, 15, 20. It's actually moving up in an exponential way going from 10 to the minus 5. Each one is 10 times the other, not just the number 10, but 10 times. And that's what makes it uh, um, exp increasing exponentially. And then three, um, we look at the y-axis and we see that stimulation and the response to uh, auxin. And then for the whole ex exponential versus logarithm, yes, that, that's happening and we're, we're aware of that. And the whole area and slope thing, we probably um, don't need to deal with that simply because there's only two questions <laughs> on this. And also because there's no boxes under the graphs. Because <laughs> when you have graphs like that, you need to have, uh, or it's useful to have some boxes under them so you can count the boxes uh, to get the area under the curve. At least that's one way to do it. So uh, question 44, um, which are the following uh, propositions most supported by the figure? Externally applied auxin between 10 to the minus five and 10 parts per million. So as soon as they say that, uh, 10 to the minus five to 10 parts per million, like, of course, it's your exam, you paid for it, so you can annotate it as much as you want. So you wanna make sure that you draw a line at 10 to the minus five, and you draw a line at uh, 10 to the one, so that uh, you make sure that you're not going to uh, make a mistake and count an area of the curve outside of the area that they're talking about. So then, uh, so now we can look at the answer choices. There are two auxin concentrations at which stem and bud stimulation are equal to each other. Stem and bud. Okay, so if we're talking about equal to each other at a particular auxin concentration, it means that the graphs must intersect. There must be a common uh, spot for them. And, uh, you know, at the uh, risk of uh, drawing an absolutely horrible thing. Okay, uh, so here, right there, that would be a point of intersection between uh, two diagrams for the stem and, and for the bud. And so that would be uh, only one place where the auxin concentration, um, where uh, stem and bud stimulation are equal to each other. There would be only one spot for that. And then answer choice uh, B, uh, there are two auxin concentrations which stem and root. So if we look at stem and root, we can see that there's a point somewhere around 10 to the minus three where there's an intersection of those two graphs, stem and root. But besides that, there's no other intersection. So there's only one. So B is also incorrect. So A and B are incorrect because there's only one for both. Then C, there are two auxin concentrations at which bud and root stimulation are equal to each other. So we look at bud and root and we see that there is indeed two uh, concentrations at which they're equal. There's a, there's a spot um, somewhere around here, which is uh, 10 to the minus four. So 10 to the minus four, but the other spot is somewhere around 10 to the two or 10 to the three, which is clearly outside of the range that we are uh, looking at. So there's only one spot within the range that we're looking at, which is uh, somewhere around 10 to the minus four. So again, C is incorrect. And then D, there is one concentration for each pair of organs. Well, yeah, we just established that, <laughs> at which two organs are equally stimulated. Yeah, so we just established that in A, B, and C, we established that D is the correct answer. And then um, 45, which of the following best explains why a plant stem bends towards light? Okay, so uh, here's some light. Okay, great uh, diagram. I think I drew it better when I was in primary school. And then uh, here's a stem of some sort, okay? And I'm pretending that there are some cells uh, in there. Okay, so as this stem is gonna grow, if this stem is gonna grow towards the light, there's only two ways it can do this. Either it starts to inhibit or stop the growth of cells 
that are on the side of this, uh, the light so that these cells continue to grow and then start bending because they grow more and these ones are inhibited then it sort of pivots uh, towards the sun so that's one way to do it <clears throat> but the other way to do it is these cells always grow normally they don't change at all but these cells on the other side start growing super fast and because these are growing super fast and these are just growing normally, suddenly the plant starts to bend towards the light. So those are the two possibilities. And of course, we just learned that auxin is um, a plant uh, hormone. Uh, I don't think they use the word hormone, but uh, it is. And, uh, and it regulates growth. So um, it can, it will, and it does so by cell enlargement and division. So that means it's going to act on this side, the opposite side to the sun, in order to make this bend um, towards the light. So it would act on the unlit side of the stem, and that bends towards the light. And if ever you had any doubt, it had to be the unlit side, because Acer loves opposites. They love to, to whatever you get in your mind, they want you to, to, to do the opposite. So, um, and that's it for this, uh, for this, um, um, questions 44 and 45 and now we can have a little music <laughs>